narrates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we reached the statement where Allah Almighty says Ya ibadi innakum tukhti'oona bil layli wal nahar O my servants, you commit sins during the day and during the night wa ana aghfiru dhunuba jami'a and I forgive all kinds of sins fastaghfiruni aghfir lakum so ask me for my forgiveness and I will forgive you and we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is telling us about a fact in ourselves and that is the fact that we commit sins during the day and during the night. But he's also giving us the solution and that is to turn to Allah Azzawajal for forgiveness. And that is why one of the great Imams of Muslims used to say that your Lord, your Creator told you about your disease but he also told you what is the cure for that disease. So they asked him, what is the disease? He said that your disease is committing sins. And the cure for that is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness. And it was also narrated in another hadith that that Allah extend his hands during the night so that people who committed sins during the day may repent and he extends his hands during the day so that people who committed sins during the night may repent or ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness. Then this hadith goes that the Prophet says that Allah Almighty says, Ya ibadi innakum lan tablughu dhurri fatadurruni. O my servants, you are not going to be able to harm me. You are not going to be able to harm me so as to bring any kind of harm towards me. And you are not going to be able to benefit me so as to bring any kind of benefit towards me. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of the fact that we are poor. That we are as he describes in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhan nasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah that all human beings, you are the impoverished, you are the poor, you are the ones who are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahu huwa al-ghani, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is rich. You're not going to be able to harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a bit. You're not going to be able to do any kind of thing which will hurt Allah azza wa jal. And you are not going to be able also to bring any kind of benefit towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But rather, you will bring benefit towards yourself when you obey Allah. And you will protect your own self from harm when you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the hadith says, Ya ibadi, law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum, wa insakum wa jinnakum. كانوا على أتقى قلب رجل واحد منكم ما زاد ذلك في ملكي شيئا سبحان الله that all my servants if the first among you and the last among you and the jinn among you and the human among you if they all had the best of hearts the purest of hearts among you this will not increase in my dominion anything in my mulk in my dominion. This is not going to increase anything. So if you were to imagine that this entire universe, this entire world had the purest of hearts, the most beautiful of hearts, the most obedient of hearts, they were all pious people. If you could imagine this universe like that, something very beautiful, but it will not increase in the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the mulk of Allah azza wa jal, one single bit. Why? Because he does not even need his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's above all of his creation. And every one of his creation is in need of him. So when you remember this, this will remind you of your state as a servant, as a slave, as a abd of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is in need of his Lord and creator and sustainer, while that Lord and creator and sustainer does not need anything from you and that by worshiping him and coming closer to him and prostrating to him and putting your forehead for him on the floor and bowing to him, you're benefiting yourself and you're not bringing any kind of benefit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum. Oh my servants, 
If the first among you and the last among you were insakum, the humans, wajinnakum, and the jinns, they all had the most wicked of hearts, they will not bring any kind of harm towards me. So if again you imagine this universe, where every single person in this universe is actually a wicked person. And if you imagine all of the people of who existed before us, that they also had the most wicked heart of hearts, this will not decrease a bit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's dominion. My dear brothers and sisters, this should remind us about the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How great our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. How above all of us he subhanahu wa ta'ala is. How he's the ghani, he's the richest. Ya ayyuhan nasu antum, O human beings, you are the impoverished. You are the ones who are in need of Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ghani and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the richest. It's very important to remember this concept that we are worshipping Allah because we are the ones who are in need of Him. We are staying away from Allah's disobedience. Why? Because we want to protect ourselves. Then the hadith continues and the Prophet sallallahu says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Aya ibadi law anna awwalakum wa akhirakum. O oh my servants, if the first among you and the last among you, wa insakum and the humans and the jinns, if they were all together in one place, فَسَأَلُونِي And they would ask me, فَأَعْطَيْتُ كُلَّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَسْأَلَتَهُ And I gave every single one of them his need. مَا نَقَصَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ مُلْكِ This will not decrease anything from my dominion. إِلَّا كَمَا يَنْقُصُ الْمِخْيَطُ إِذَا أُدْخِلَ الْبَحْرِ It's just like when you dip a needle in an ocean, in a huge sea. Again, this should remind us that when we turn to Allah and when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He could give us what we need and it will not hurt Him. As a matter of fact, if you could imagine this, that all of the people who are before us, they are present in one place. And all of the people of our time, six billion something people, they are present in one place. And all of the jinn who were before us, we don't know the number of those jinn. We don't even know the number of those jinn who are in our present time. But if you could imagine that they had the same number as the human beings, and they were all in the same place, and every single one of them is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something. This person is asking for a car, and this person is asking for a house, and this person is asking Allah to cure him, and that person is asking Allah to protect him, and the third person is asking Allah to give him this, and the fourth person is asking Allah to give him that. Everyone is asking for his needs, big needs, because you're asking for every single thing you want. Allah Azza wa Jal could give every one of them what they need. And the hadith says, مَا نَقَصَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ مُلْكِ and if he gives every one of them what they need, this will not decrease anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's dominion. Absolutely nothing. And the similitude Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives is, it's just like a needle. Imagine a needle that you dip in a huge sea. How much would that needle take from water? It's almost absolutely nothing. And then, the hadith goes on this beautiful hadith, and we'll conclude it now, inshallah ta'ala, that, Ya ibadi innama hi a'malukum. All my servants, it is your deeds. Uhsiha lakum. I reckon them for you. Thumma uwafikum iyyah. And then I recompense you for them. Faman wajada khayran. If you find something good, falyahmadillah. Then he or she should be thankful to Allah. وَمَنَّ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَٰلِكَ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَهِ But if you find something different, then do not blame anyone except yourself. This hadith reminds us here, this part of the hadith, it reminds us of three things. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recorded every single thing that we did in the past, and He will record everything that we are doing now in the present time, and he will record every single thing that we are going to do in the future. كُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ كِتَابًا so This is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran that everything is basically written down. 
But then we're going to be questioned for it on the day of Qiyamah. If you find something good, then you be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you find something bad, then do not blame anyone except your own self. Here we are reminded that when we do something good, we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. Because if it wasn't for the blessings of Allah, we wouldn't have been able to do it. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُ Say, by the mercy of Allah, by the grace of Allah, by the mercy of Allah, let them rejoice. You say, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah that Allah enabled me to pray this prayer. If it wasn't for the guidance of Allah, I wouldn't have prayed it. Alhamdulillah that He enabled me to fast the month of Ramadan. Millions of people did not fast it. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah that He enabled me to go to Hajj. Millions of people's heart are longing to go to Hajj and they don't have the means to go. Alhamdulillah. وَمَنْ وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكْ فَلَا يَلُمَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَهِ But if you find something different, meaning you did bad deeds, then don't blame anyone except your own self. And here, this is, I think, a very important concept. We tend as human beings like to blame other people for what you did. For example, you ask someone, why do you get so angry? Why do you get so angry? Why do you have this temper problem? He tells you, oh, because my father had it, because my grandfather had it. Okay, now can't you change? Definitely you can. You have the ability to change. Okay, why don't you pray? Well, my mother and my father don't pray, therefore I'm not going to pray. Don't blame other people. Blame your own self. You have the ability to get up, to make wudu and to pray. You have the ability to be able, inshallah, by the will of Allah, to control your anger and to have a better character, and so on and so forth. Don't get used to blaming other people, but rather, be responsible for your actions. We're going to continue with our episodes, inshallah. Until then, I leave you with the peace and the blessings of Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Allah, for blessing us with